before we start the video, please go check out some of my other ones after, of course, you watch this one. Also, please like and subscribe. Okay, back to it. Five Nights at Freddy's, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna call it FNAF. This game took the world by storm in a first release back in 2014, and since then, it has accumulated millions and millions of fans who enjoy the story and creepiness of this universe created by one, Scott Cawthon. The success of these PC games have sparked the franchise to go in many different directions, like releasing many series of books and even two AAA games, toys and Funko Pops alike. But now their next biggest challenge is cinema. Video game movie adaptations have a bad stigma to them. A lot of people say that they simply can't be done. And if they are done, it's not to their full potential. The FNAF movie is set to release in the next couple years. Filming has just begun, so I wanted to tell you all how the FNAF movie could be great. Let's do it. We all know the characters in the FNAF universe are a very big part of what makes the series very unique. But if the movie fails to capture the creepiness and style, what makes them special? Bloomhouse, it will fail. But how do you make sure that they're not messed up? Well, you stick close to the source material. And if they do make some changes, well, hopefully it's not something crazy. A very good example of this is JR's, a FNAF fan game, which the animatronics are very big and lanky and creepy, but they're not dumb. As far as the people in this movie, well, we've actually never seen them. Sure, we've seen them as pixelated characters, but not humans. The only time we've seen humans is recently in Security Breach, but then it was only like two, so, you know, it's kind of room to play around with. But in the original first four games, in FNAF 3, you can get a secret loading screen before the night starts, and you see Springtrap ripping his face off. You can see some of William Afton's face, but no flesh or hair. So really, it's just up to casting, it's up to them, because William Afton is someone very important in the FNAF universe. Now, it is said that Matthew Lillard is set to play William, and while he is known mainly for playing Shaggy in the live-action Scooby-Doo movies, good movies by the way, he can have a darker side to him, and a more crazy side, as we see in Scream. So, I'm feeling optimistic about his performance. Now, with Mike Schmidt, there's more room for creativity, because we played as him in the first one, and he does not speak, we don't see him, nothing, so they can make him relatable in a way, and hopefully likable. The actor playing him is Josh Hutcherson. He's mainly known for his role in Hunger Games and the Bridge to Terabithia when he was a kid, which is, that movie's pretty good. I'm also optimistic about this cast choice. Another big thing in this movie is how they handle the side characters. Now, hopefully they don't make these characters annoying or unlikable, and if they are, then they better have very gory and cool death scenes. Finally, for this section, a character that I feel like they have to get perfect, and I think a lot of people would agree with me, is how they handle Golden Freddy. Now, Golden Freddy is something cherished so much in the FNAF community. Anyway, if Golden Freddy is not perfect, then the movie will take a hit, because that's another character that's very big and important to the FNAF storyline and universe. Moving on to story, we all know that FNAF has a very, very complicated storyline, but since this is the first movie, it's going to be taking place, which we can all assume, in the first game. So if they're going to make more, which is ultimately up to whether people think the movie is good or not, and obviously if it makes money, then they better make sure that they stick to the game. Another important thing is how they handle each night, and making sure like everything makes sense, like why the building doesn't have a backup generator when the power runs out, so that the whole building doesn't just shut off and you just die. Touching back to the characters, which obviously are the story, hopefully Blumhouse can make the characters have layers to them as seen in other horror movies made by different studios, and if not, then hey, that's okay, they can just add up to the kill count. The animatronics aside from the, how they're gonna look, them being possessed are another thing that I hope they stick to the regular story about the souls of the children, but if they do add something original, hopefully it makes sense and adds something fresh and unique to the storyline. Now, let's say this movie does really good like I mentioned before, and I'm hoping the directors plan for that and set up something for future movies. Like the second movie can be the FNAF 2 location, and a prequel. I mean, FNAF 2 is a lot of people's favorites, I mean, I really like that game. It added so much to the FNAF universe. So it'd be cool if in this first movie they teased the bite of 87, and just leave it out there for the fans until it's revisited again in the sequel. And let's say this movie does amazing, and then boom, we have the FNAF CU. They end up making 6 or 7 movies, now that's when things become really interesting. Imagine seeing a FNAF world movie, that would be crazy. Just as important as the story, the setting is something vital to the movie, something that we have never seen, as far as I know, is the pizzeria during regular operating hours, you know, with kids and adults eating and enjoying the entertainment Fazbear to offer. We've never seen that, so I hope this movie can capture the feeling and wonder. Also, the entire pizzeria's layout is still kind of a mystery. Now, I know there have been so many Gmod maps, and yes, some of them are really well done, but how does the outside of the building really look like, and what does the entrance look like? How many arcade machines, if any, are there? So they can kind of play around with this and add a price corner even though FNAF 1 doesn't have one, but little small details like that could make the pizzeria more believable. Now, an area that we have never seen in FNAF 1 is the kitchen. The only thing we get when we go to that camera feed is just audio, and the only way we know how Chica's in there is we hear the sounds of pans either being thrown around or shuffled. This camera has always been disabled. It was left a mystery for us fans to kind of figure out why. And how does the kitchen look like? I mean, I know it's kind of funny to speculate how a kitchen looks like in a kid's pizzeria, but I hope that Blumhouse does it justice and puts this mystery to bed.
Now, the main big part of the whole movie is, of course, what makes a horror movie a horror movie? It's the horror aspect of it. FNAF is known for its jump scares. In the game, they are pretty scary. The sudden screaming, the face of the animatronic just popping out of nowhere to scare you. But how will that convey into the big screen? Jump scares in films are kind of easy to catch before they happen, but sometimes, when they're done good, it can be a heart racing experience. How will it look? Will the FNAF movie have a POV of Mike's perspective to emulate the games, experience them from time to time, or will the jump scares from the animatronics come at us in different ways? Either way, hopefully they are done to the best of their ability. Now I know I've discussed this earlier, talking about how the pizzeria looks during the day, but at night, it has to look terrifying. The emptiness and quietness of the place is just amazing. Seeing the rows of empty seats by the tables and animatronics just standing there on stage, lifeless. Also, the employees only room is another area many fans, aka me, hope they perfect seeing the heads and endoskeletons of the animatronics. I wonder if they'll stick to the exact FNAF one layout and just turn that into live action. Either way, hopefully it's pretty cool. Even the office, though it doesn't have a very intricate and complicated design, it's iconic for the entire franchise, so big things like that they would have to be included. For example, like the cupcake, the celebrate poster, and of course, the fan. Finally, to close out this segment of the video, the one thing everybody who's ever played FNAF is scared about losing powers. I mentioned earlier, the game can get away with stuff like that. It doesn't really have to make sense why the power can go out and why it's safe after 6am, but when it's a movie, you have to make it make sense. And I'm excited to see the losing power sequence on screen. Hopefully they can capture the horror of seeing Freddy's eyes glow as the song plays out and cut to black before he kills you. Now, the make or break point for the entire film. This can kill the film and everything I talked about in this video. It's the rating and length time. If this movie is rated PG-13, which it most likely is gonna happen, it won't be as violent or as scary as the games, lore, and books make it out to be. FNAF is a very violent, disturbing game series. They talk about children, you know, I can't really say it, but basically getting sent back to the lobby. And how the animatronics forcefully stuff the player into a suit, breaking all their bones and killing you in the process. But if the movie is rated R, then we are in for a true FNAF movie that would be more violent and have more violent imagery. And I feel like it would be more true to the game. Touching on the runtime, some movies suffer because of it, due to them being too short. I feel like a good length for this movie would be mm, two hours flat, or maybe an hour and fifty. You want time to explain the story to people who have never even played FNAF or even knew what it was before this film. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. Now, I don't want to make it sound like I'm policing or this movie has to be the certain way. No, this movie can be completely different and unique and it could still be great. I'm totally open to that. This is just my opinion, what I think can make this movie good. Now. Feel free to let me know down in the comments below, what do you think, what are your opinions, what do you think can make this movie good? Please check out some of my other videos and like and subscribe. Also, thank you for the huge support I've been receiving. We are past over 130 subscribers, thank you so much. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.